The old Coast Guard station is a museum that's housed in a 1903 life-saving station, which was a predecessor of the Coast Guard. So this actually was a Coast Guard station up until 1969 when it was decommissioned, sat derelict for 10 years, and then was saved, renovated, and turned into a museum back in 1981. This building itself is owned by the city, but all operations, all the collection is privately owned by a nonprofit, the Virginia Beach Maritime Museum, trading as the old Coast Guard station. And it's our mission to honor and preserve our maritime coastal history. And so, Obviously, since it was a Coast Guard station, our main focus is on the life-saving service and early Coast Guard history, local shipwrecks, but we also extend to local interests such as the development of the resort city, uh, lifeguards, surfing, anything that has to do with our local maritime history. This was one of nearly 300 stations around the perimeter of the United States, all the coastlines, including the Gulf and the Great Lakes, and it housed surfmen, and it was their job to patrol the beaches and offer assistance to any vessels in danger, and so they would save lives from people in a shipwreck, they would save cargo, try to salvage the ships and get them back out to sea where people continue their voyages and cargo could be delivered to its destination. They operated very much like a fire station in that, the lower, in this particular instance, the lower gallery um, was an equipment room where they would keep boats and apparatus carts, rope, and all the paraphernalia they would need to rescue lives. And then upstairs would be crew quarters. Um, many stations would have either a kitchen or a separate cookhouse. Um, the keeper or the captain would have his own quarters as well. And in some cases, if the men were married, they might actually have a house nearby, but it had to be within earshot in case the alarm was sounded. Over here we have a diorama of the station and the surfmen conducting a rescue of a ship in distress. You'll notice that the boat room doors face the ocean so that there was um, an event, they could just open the boat room doors and take the boat or the apparatus cart straight out to the beach. Sometimes they might have to go a couple miles one way or the other to get to the ship in distress. Um, and for that, they'd either have to pull it themselves or hopefully they might have a horse that they could hitch up to the cart. So all the work is basically done on the beach by the surfmen. They basically run from one side of the rope to pull it in one direction, then around to the other side to pull it in the opposite direction. Initial setup in practice rounds, they tried to do the setup and get the first person off in five minutes or less. Some stations were very good at that. Some stations were not so good and were written up. In a storm condition, a setup probably took a bit longer because you had the wind factor, the darkness as well. There's reports of shipwrecks that occurred that they had to wait till first light be able to get out there or um, for the wind to die down. For practice, the white mass that's on the shore is the uh, practice ship in distress. And um, they would do this at least twice a week, set up, get a person down. Here in Virginia Beach, they'd actually let um, vacationers go up on the wreck pole and come down. And so it was a bit of fun as well as uh, practice session. The apparatus cart was used in conjunction with the breeches buoy. This is what all the equipment would have been put on so you could take it nearby the ship in distress. You'd want to get as close as you could and many times the shipwreck would occur several miles away from the actual station. Stations in this area were located about six miles apart so you could be traveling up say five miles to assist another station with a rescue. You can see here the breeches buoy is a canvas seat attached to a life ring which is all connected to a pulley system that's going to ride along the line. You can only move one person at a time with this system, but it moves so quickly that you could take a fair number of people off a ship in a relatively short time if conditions allowed. Sometimes it would be a wet trip. Uh, but there are a few instances of a person going completely above the waves and never even getting a toe wet. We are in the shipwreck gallery 
where we have information displays on over 40 shipwrecks which occurred along the Virginia coast. One of the most famous shipwrecks to occur here was the Dictator, which wrecked in 1891 right in front of the SeaTac station. Captain Jurgensen and his crew were on board along with the captain's wife and four-year-old son when the ship ran into a storm right off the coast of Virginia. The ship quickly started to fall apart and parts of the ship and its cargo of lumber were soon in the raging sea, making the rescue very treacherous for the surfmen. The captain ended up being the last person to make it to the shore alive. The following day, after the storm had abated, everybody went out to walk along the beach where it was littered with pieces of the ship and the lumber from the cargo. Several pieces were found and collected by locals Years later, when this was turned into a museum, some of these pieces were given or loaned to the museum for display. One of the most famous pieces was the figurehead, which at that time was picked up and placed on the beach by the Princess Anne Hotel. People would come from around, hear the story, and take photos by the figurehead. In fact, some people were actually carving off pieces of it with pen knives and taking it home as a souvenir. It stood on the shore for a number of years until it finally disintegrated from the weather elements. And the only piece that remains today is a small piece from the very base on which the lady's foot stood. Years later, a bronze statue was made in homage to it. In fact, two of them were sculpted. One stands here near the site of the shipwreck and the other one back in Moss, Norway, which is the home of Captain Jurgensen and his wife. One of the most interesting things is just overall the entire story. A lot of people come in thinking it's a military museum with the name Coast Guard in it. And then they realize that we're talking about the shipwrecks, the stories of these heroes. And this is a service that spanned from 1878 to 1915 and then just changed names on their Coast Guard, it continues on today, but more people have heard about the Pony Express. And that lasted just mere months, comparatively speaking. And so they're just amazed that there's these stories of tragedy and heroics that they've never heard about. Um, the fact that these people went out and risked their lives, the informal motto was, you have to go out, you don't have to come back. So they're risking life and limb to save people they didn't know, much like today's first responders. And um, they did it with such, what we would consider nowadays, such primitive uh, equipment, but they did it quite well. The success rate was quite high. Um, just in this area alone, between 78 and 1915, on the Virginia coast was over 600 shipwrecks that we know of, and of them, it's less than two dozen that had loss of life. So they did a spectacular job under horrible conditions with um, primitive equipment, but they did it well.